Welcome to a brand new Microsoft Exam Guide series. This is SC401. Stay tuned. Let's get started with some scene setting. As ever on these exam guides, I am going to be working from the Microsoft Learn content. The SC401 exam is called Administering Information Security in Microsoft 365. There are lots of useful links and tips on this page for how you can earn the certification, how you can renew the certification, and much, much more. Things like exam scoring and score reports, using an exam sandbox, and taking free practice assessments. It tells you all about the skills measured, the sort of persona that should be looking to take this exam. As an information security administrator, you plan and implement information security of sensitive data by using purview and related services. You are responsible for mitigating risks by protecting data inside collaboration environments that are managed by M365 from internal and external threats and protecting data used by AI services. If this is resonating with what you do for your job, if you're working for Microsoft, if you're working for a Microsoft partner or a small business, or you're just interested, then this exam guide is for you. Let's look at the skills at a glance that are going to be measured and the percentages covered. 30 to 35% of this exam will be about implementing information protection. Another 30 to 35 will be about implementing data loss prevention and retention. And the final 30 to 35% is all about managing risks, alerts, and activities. It's broken down into main sections and into subsections. And we are going to start, as you would imagine, at the very beginning with this first subsection within implementing information protection. And that is all about implementing and managing data classification. Now, these first two bullet points we'll try and cover off in this first video. And these are all about identifying sensitive information requirements for an organization's data and translating sensitive information requirements into built-in or custom sensitive information types. Now, these first two points are not really something that require anything in the way of configuration as such. They are more theoretical and from an understanding point of view. So we're going to have a look at relevant learn articles here. And that first point, identify sensitive information requirements for an organization's data. That for me leans very, very much into the need for you to learn about sensitive information types. And this learn.microsoft.com article sets you up very, very nicely for that. And it goes on to say that identifying and classifying sensitive items that are under your organization's control is the first step in the information protection discipline. So good, we're starting in the right place. And Microsoft Purview provides three ways of identifying items so they can be classified. Number one, manually by users. Number two, via automated pattern recognition as with sensitive information types. And number three, by machine learning. We will learn all about these in this course. So you're going to hear a lot about sensitive information types or SITs in this course. What are they? These are pattern-based classifiers. They detect sensitive information like social security, credit card, or bank account numbers to identify sensitive items. And you can see here some sensitive information type entity definitions. And this is going to give you that complete list of all of the SITs that are included within Microsoft 365, of which there are a number of pre-configured ones, and you can create your own. Licensing is important. You are going to be required to understand the licensing required to make use of credential scanning SITs. So make sure that you look into this for a list of all the credential scanning SITs. You can see all credential sensitive information types here. This SIT contains all credential scanning SITs that are available in the portal. We can learn here that sensitive information types are used in purview data loss prevention policies, sensitivity labels, retention labels, insider risk management, communication compliance, auto labeling policies, and Microsoft Preva. All things we will cover in this course. Now, I just couldn't spend too much time in those learn documents. I 
just had to get a bit practical here. We are in the Microsoft Purview compliance portal. You can reach this at purview.microsoft.com. You are going to need to know all about the roles that you will need in order to access this portal with certain privileges. For now, we're not going to dwell too much on that. I am logged in as a global administrator here. But what I want to do is show you these sensitive information types that are baked in to the Purview portal. To see these built-in sensitive information types, click on to Solutions, go to Information Protection, Expand Classifiers, and you will see the second item down is Sensitive Info Types. This to me should be the top item in this list because this is where it all begins. There are many different kinds of classifiers and you need to understand all of these in relation to the SC401 examination. But we'll start with sensitive info types. The thing I really like about all Microsoft portals is you get good descriptions from the very top of each page telling you exactly what this is all about. And the sensitive info types here are available to use in your security and compliance policies. And these include a large collection of types that Microsoft provides spanning regions around the globe, as well as any custom types that you have created. So you can filter these, but these are going in alphabetical order. And we can see that we have things like ABA routing number, the supported platforms for this one are all. The type is Entity. The publisher is Microsoft. And as we go down the list, we can see lots of different types here of sensitive information types. 334 in total in this list. If you pick on one, such as all medical terms and conditions, you get a description for what that particular SIT is all about. This one tells us that it's all about detecting all medical terms, blood and lab test terms, medications, procedures, etc. Confidence level is set to high, and this one is a built-in SIT created by Microsoft. Look at the filters to get the views you want. We can change the views here to Microsoft 365 only. We can change the types to entity, bundled entity, or more. And we can also change the publisher as we require. So as we can see here, the built-in sensitive information types are provided by Microsoft. There are six that are custom and one other which is under another one of my own domains. Going back to the Learn document, make sure you familiarize yourself with the differences, these built-in sensitive info types named entity sensitive information types, custom SITs, exact data match SITs as well, and get to know the fundamental parts of a sensitive information type. Each sensitive information type entity consists of these fields. We have a name field to indicate how the sensitive information type is referred to, a description, which is an explanation of what the sensitive information type is looking for, the pattern, this defines what a SIT detects, and it consists of components, primary element, supporting elements, confidence level, and proximity. And we have a table that follows to describe each component of the patterns used in defining sensitive information types. These are important to understand. It's also important to understand things like proximity. And we have diagrams here to show how match detection works with respect to proximity. So these sensitive information types, as we've already said, just to reinforce this point, they are available, they are there to be used in purview solutions, such as sensitivity labeling, such as data loss prevention, such as insider risk management, and so on and so forth. So do take the opportunity to look through this learn content. As we go through, just heading back to the exam guide, you will see that as we go through this section of implementing and managing data classification, we are going to look at creating and managing custom sensitive information types. We're going to look at implementing document fingerprinting, creating and managing exact data match classifiers, trainable classifiers, and more, which is why in these first two bullet points, we're not getting into the weeds of these. This video is scene setting only with these first two items.
Moving on to that second bullet point, which is translate sensitive information requirements into built-in or custom sensitive information types. What this relates to very, very strongly, in my opinion, is this wonderful article here is all about knowing your data, protecting your data, preventing data loss, and governing your data. This is a crucial step for any organization into understanding and managing their data journey in their organization. So, and this is a big challenge for many, many organizations that I have dealt with in my professional career. You would be staggered by just how many organizations, small and enormous enterprise level organizations who do not know their data. They have unstructured data in multiple locations, in on-premises locations, hybrid, cloud, shadow IT locations. So this is the starting point, knowing your data. And this relates to things like understanding your data landscape and identify important data across your hybrid environments. Step one, there's no easy way to do this. Stakeholders in the organization have to be involved and you have to dig into that diligently. Next, protect your data. This is all about applying flexible protection actions, including encryption, access restrictions, and visual markings. This is what we will dive deeper into when we get into things like sensitivity labels. Prevent data loss. This is all about detecting risky behavior and prevent accidental oversharing of sensitive information. This is data loss prevention, as this indicates, all about DLP policies and rules to prevent that accidental sharing or oversharing of that sensitive information. And finally, to govern your data, which translates into automatically retain, delete and store data and records in a compliant manner. There is a plethora of information in this document to tell you all about how you begin to know your data and the capabilities within Microsoft 365. Sensitive information types are your starting point. Use these to identify sensitive data by using the built-in ones or custom regular expressions or a function. Trainable classifiers, and we'll get to these in more detail, identifies that sensitive data by using examples of the data you're interested in, rather than identifying elements in the item pattern matching. So you can use built-in classifiers or train a classifier with your own content. And data classification, which is a graphical identification of items in your organization that have a sensitivity label, a retention label, or have been classified. You can always use this information to gain insights into the actions that your users are taking on these items. And this is an important point to note that organizations are going to be in different states of their journeys. Not everybody is a born in the cloud startup. We might be dealing with organizations that has a lot of technical debt, that has data all over the place, different parts of the journey. They might be on Microsoft 365, have been for some time, but they're not using Purview. Who knows where they're at? So this is key. Understand the uniqueness of the particular scenario that you're dealing with. And this will come up in the exam questions for sure. They will give you scenarios of a type of customer and where they are at in their journey, what they have, where it's located, what their challenges are. You will be asked to answer questions based on that scenario. So do familiarize yourself with all of these principles here. And that will set you in good stead for starting this journey. So do look also at the licensing requirements. Already stated this, but this is so important. You will be tested in the exam on licenses that will give you the functionality that you need to carry out certain things within Microsoft Purview. This platform is immense, and we are gonna try and break this down for you in this series as simply and as logically and as diligently as we can. This brief scene setting is important for you to understand the task that is ahead of you. The next video, we will come back and we will look at create and manage custom sensitive information types. And we will really get stuck in, do some real hands-on work with the topics that follow. And that gets us up and running. A very nice eased in start to this course. 
I hope it is making sense already. It's going to get more intense as we start getting into more of the topics and get into deeper dives with Microsoft Purview and some of the technologies that we've really only just set the scene with today. So let me know what you think. As always, please do hit the thumbs up, the like button if you've enjoyed the video. Please uh, bookmark this playlist, which I will put a link in the description to. More will be coming at regular intervals. I'm really, really looking forward to getting into another exam guide. I feel that we're getting back to the roots of this channel. And you can also expect resumed content from Ben Thomas and myself quite soon as well on SC200. So exam guides galore, learning content for everyone. I hope you enjoy it. Right, well, on that note, I'm going to say... Goodbye, stay safe, take care, travel well, and see you next time. Bye-bye.